Hey, this is Professor Perez. Today, we are going to look at multiplication. But before we get started, we need to get out our student volunteer, Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, ready to go? Yeah. All right, let's get started right there. There are different ways of indicating multiplication, Charlie. We can use a little dot, and that's most commonly used. Or we can use this little cross. Now, sometimes we don't use the cross in algebra because we mistake it for an X. We can put a number outside of parentheses with no indicated operation, and that means that you are to multiply. If you put both numbers in parentheses with no operation in between, that means multiply the two numbers together. All these expressions are telling you to multiply 2 by 3. Well, what does multiplication actually mean? You will see multiplication is actually repeated addition of the same number. So multiplication is really addition. 2 times 3 means take 3 2's and add them together. 3 times 2 means take 2 3's and add them together. And both results are 6. So notice here that 2 times 3 is equal to 3 times 2. This is a demonstration of the commutative property for multiplication. Remember, we had a commutative property for addition, which basically told us that 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2. Well, since multiplication is really addition, 2 times 3 actually equals 3 times 2. That's why there is a commutative property for multiplication. And it states that a times b equals b times a. So you can multiply two numbers in any order and get the same result. All right, let's do 4 times 3, Charlie, on the number line. What does 4 times 3 mean? It means it takes three 4s and add them together. So here we go. There's one 4, two 4s, three 4s, and that gives you 12. Now let's bust out some Kung Fu watch. If we were going to do 4 times 4, that means add another 4. So if we add another 4 here, what do we get, Charlie? 16. 16, that's right. 4 times 4 is 16. Well, what about 4 times 5? We add another 4. What do you get, Charlie? 20. Very nice there. You do get 20. All right. Now, what about 4 times 6? Charlie, look at the pattern. 12, 16, 20. What comes next? 24. Very nice there, Charlie. 4 times 6 is 24, and the pattern will continue. 4 times 7, we add another 4. We get 28. 4 times 8, we add another 4, and we get 32. Now, this is how you learn your multiplication tables, right? This is how the pattern works when you're dealing with your 4 multiplication tables, right? Just add 4s. Let's look at 4 times 8. 4 times 8 means you have 8 of these 4s being added together, and that's 32. It's the same as 8 times 4 by the commutative property for multiplication. So, 4 times 9. All we got to do is add another 4. And so, 4 times 9 is 36. If we do 4 times 10, add another 4, and of course you get 40. Most people don't miss that one. But 4 times 11, all you have to do is add another 4, and you get 44, right? 4 times 12, add another 4, you get 48. And let's keep going, don't get scared. 4 times 13, just add another 4, and what do you get, Charlie? 52. Very nice there, Charlie. 4 times 13 is 52. There you go, that's some good kung fu right there. All right, how about 7 times 10? Well, 7 times 10, just add the 0 to the 7, and it's 70, right? Remember, it means you have 10 of these 7s being added up. So if we do 7 times 11, all we have to do is add another 7, right? And what's 70 plus 7, Charlie? 77. That's right, 77. And so you see, when we do 7 times 11, all we have to do is add another 7 to 70, and we do get 77. 7 times 12. Well, if 7 times 10 is 70, and we want 7 times 12, we just have to add two more 7s, and that gives us 70 plus 14, which is 84, which is 7 times 12, right? Now, the pattern works with subtraction, too. Watch. If we want 7 times 9, well, if 7 times 10 is 70, remember, 10 of those 7s being added up, then 7 times 9 only adds 9 of those 7s. So we need to take away a 7 from 70 to do 7 times 9. 7 times 9 is equivalent to 70. Take away 1 7, which gives us 63. 7 times 9 is 63, just like 9 times 7 is 63. If we do 7 times 8, we take away 2 7s, we get 56. All right, Charlie. 7 times 12. We're going to take the 12, and we are going to write it in expanded form. Remember, 12 in expanded form is 10 plus 2. So let's go ahead and do that. 
And now we're going to use something called the distributive property. We're going to talk about that property very soon. The distributive property says that you can multiply numbers across addition and subtraction and not affect the result. Watch. 7 times 10 is 70 plus 7 times 2 is 14. And if we do that sum, you'll see it's 84. It's the same as 7 times 12, right? You add two more 7s to it, there you go. Some of you do multiplication by the vertical format. The reason that vertical format works is because you're using this distributive property. And we'll show that very soon here. 7 times 8. Let's take the 8 and rewrite it as 10 subtract 2. 10 subtract 2 is 8. And let's distribute by multiplication. 7 times 10 subtract 7 times 2. And that gives you 70 subtract 14, which is 56. That is 7 times 8. How about 11 times 12, Charlie? Let's rewrite the 12 in expanded form as 10 plus 2. And we do 11 times 10 plus 11 times 2, and that gives you 110 plus 22, which is 132. If we did 8 times 7, let's rewrite the 7 as 5 plus 2. The reason we're doing that, because most of us may remember that 8 times 5 is 40. And 8 times 2 is 16. So we break it down into a little addition problem. That's Kung Fu. And so it changes to 40 plus 16. And 40 plus 16 is 56, which is 8 times 7. 23 times 11. We rewrite the 11 as 10 plus 1. Distribute 23 times 10 plus 23 times 1. And that's 230 plus 23, which is 253, Charlie. How about 22 times 13? Well, let's write the 13 in expanded form as 10 plus 3. 22 times 10 is 220 plus 22 times 3, which is 66. And adding those numbers together, we get what, Charlie? 26. Very nice, 286. And that completes our introduction to multiplication. We'll see you again soon.